would like to remind you of a special value. Uh, this conference is held as a charity event, uh, which is aimed at raising money for the funds we cooperate with. So during the breaks, you will see the QR codes, scan them to help and donate money. Any help matters, any donation makes a difference. And uh, let's now turn to our next, uh, to our first speaker, Alex Bellerin, business agility coach. Alex, hello. Hello. It's a pleasure to have you today with us. So it's, let, me uh, take, uh, let me say a few words about you, okay? So Alex is business agility coach and itnow.com and professional scrum master, scrum trainer at Scrum Org. Alex helps organizations to become more customer-centric and to create agile work environment where people can thrive. And moreover, uh, Alex, we know you lead the IT and business agility postgraduate program at UPC school and you run two meetups about Scrum. So today we hope you will help us to explore how to discover true customer problems, how to find solutions for user problems while using dual track agile. So Alex, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you uh, to Intelias for inviting me to this event. And uh, I would like to show and convey the uh, biggest solidarity from the Spanish people to the Ukrainian people for in this cruel war. So let's uh, start. Uh, I would like to share this uh, presentation, which basically is going to talk about how to make uh, Scrum teams more focused on outcomes and also more uh, user centric. And uh, well, uh, let's uh, let's start. Uh, we will start talking about why are we in many organizations and working with. Uh, we are not uh, so uh, centered on the user problems and and on outcomes and what is the reason in my opinion my experience then i would like to introduce how uh, joining the forces between agile and ux is going to help both uh, movements in uh, and organizations i would like also to highlight the importance of uh, metrics to uh, gear the attention of uh, managers and traditional mindset people uh, to agile and uh, more customer centric outcomes then uh, I would like also to refresh how the use of uh, the tools that were introduced in the new Scrum Guide 2020, which are the product goal and the uh, spring goals, which were already existing, can also help in this mission. And uh, well, uh, some more some other tools we can use within Scrum in order to make uh, these uh, the teams more user centric. Okay, and later we will have some questions and answers at the end. So why are we here? Mm, the ideas in Agile, in the Agile Manifesto, uh, were not wrong at all. They are very good indeed. The problem, and it's a really hard one, is that uh, helping the businesses to unlearn and to embrace those ideas and evolve is, uh, like we see here with this flower on the asphalt, is, is really hard. Uh, I guess that most of you are aware of what the Agile Manifesto is. It was written in uh, 21 uh, by a bunch of uh, experts, consultants on uh, software, which were helping organizations to beat these big uh, risky projects into a more agile way of working. We all know the four values and we know the 12 principles. And uh, well, uh, we need to keep this in mind. It's uh, the ideas are still good, are still relevant, but uh, we also need to uh, put on top of it some other movements that appeared, like DevOps, like uh, user, user experience design, uh, lean thinking. Uh, so mm, we need to to keep this in mind because just with uh, repeating the Agile manifesto and uh it, the effectiveness of this is in my opinion limited so we have other tools that uh, it, they are going to to drive people for more business agility instead of it agility in, in the development of software so uh like, like i said uh the history of uh of the agile manifesto was consultants trying to make projects more agile okay but in the agile manifesto you will not read anything about 
uh, the user for uh, the DevOps and so on. So we need to, to discuss it as well. Uh, well, we I think most of you know the story. Uh, the Agile Manifesto and the Agile Movement were rolling out in the early 2010. Uh, and then uh, many management thought it was just for making software faster, okay, making the same thing, but faster. And this is a bit of the original scenes of Agile because it's really difficult to unstick and to, to forget about uh, this uh, way of conceiving Agile. Uh, Oops. Uh, and what happened is that, uh, in my experience, many of the teams I've seen, they have turned into what it's called the feature factory, where uh, they are mm, not close to the customer. They have some yes, intermediate people talking to the customer. They receive requirements or features to be developed. And uh, the mission is not uh, to add as much to solve customer problems, but to deliver solutions faster. But they cannot know if those solutions are going to be effective. And uh, perhaps what they are measure, being measured is uh, if their utilization and their productivity is high. Uh, I don't know if you have experienced this, uh, this phenomena of, of those teams that are a bit, uh, they don't have the context to take decisions. They just need to ship software faster. And uh, that is something I have found in many organizations. Uh, another thing that uh, we I try to, to convey into organizations is that we need to shift a little bit the mindset from the what it's called the project mindset, where the success is to deliver something that was defined and planned in advance in, fa in, in, in you know, in the iron triangle dimensions, like uh, delivering the scope on time and budget, uh, which also it's a kind of transaction between the provider and, and, and the buyer for the development team and the business. Okay, it's like a, a, a kind of transaction. The value and, and what it's, it's, it, it is preconceived is that uh, if we deliver this on time, it's going to be successful. But uh, I don't know how many initiatives in your experience were uh, delivered on time with the budget and with the scope, and they were not considered successful. I have met many of them and people I work with uh, also. And the problem is that uh, we are not measuring what it's called the outcome on users or are they using it? The product is going to provide a positive impact for them or the organization. Uh, so changing the mindset into the a more product oriented mindset uh, helps people to conceive that uh, the important thing is the, the impact being created. And uh, it is through Scrum and Agile easy to start measuring which is the outcome through value metrics and uh, then start to take decisions to uh, head the product or the development for uh, increase the value and not just fulfill the original plan. So changing the mindset into is, is a difficult thing, but uh, it's going to provide a lot of value. Also uh, to change what uh, are the roadmaps. The roadmaps are a way of pushing the strategic planning down from the leadership into the teams and they have to deliver them and stick to the times and and commit to their estimations or what we need is to change uh, eventually the uh, roadmaps from plan oriented into goal oriented okay so let's uh, from the leadership we can encourage them to throw business objectives or to con pass business objectives to the team and let the team figure out how to meet them. Okay, so let's uh, define what are the goals, how are we going to measure that if our goals of releases are a success, and then uh, let's define the features as hypotheses in order to, to meet those goals and let's do measure and let's take decisions from them. So this is a healthier and more effective way of delegating strategies from the leadership into the teams. So, uh, as I uh, said, uh, this is the current status I find in many organizations. And one of the things has helped me to, 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 to drive positive change into those organizations is to introduce uh, the UX design together with Agile. Uh, 
So uh, one of the authors I like a lot is uh, Marty Kagan. And one of the uh, big quotes, it helped me to, to, to convey this meaning to the leadership of organizations is that uh, products should not be uh, designed to, to deliver features or deliver solutions. Product teams should be set up for solving customer problems. So uh, this is going to help them to be more autonomous. Uh, this is uh, what uh, the more better performing organizations are organized in this way. Another thing uh, trying to join Agile and UX is to understand what is the customer centricity. Uh, so uh, some things like uh, empowering the front line, the people actually uh, working and interacting with the customer to take more decisions, giving them autonomy to fulfill the customer needs. Uh, changing the metrics, and we're going to talk that in a minute, from work metrics into value metrics is also going, metrics that are relevant for the customers is going to be important. Uh, having continuous feedback and frequent feedback to from the point of view of the customer is also going to help and it's also aligned with uh, the Agile movement, uh, which is uh, overly important is to have a leadership which is uh, really thinking on the needs of the customer and not in the internal focus of the organization. And uh, like it said here, like it says here in this figure, uh, designing the experience using things like the user journey or the service blueprint techniques in order to understand the customer and also keep it evolving through feedback. It's uh, going to be fully aligned with Agile and it's going to help if we had convinced the leadership of, of uh, those, uh, the customer centricity is, is, is going to help the company to uh, obtain better results uh, this is going also to set up the Agile teams for success. I mentioned before that uh, more, many organizations are uh, too focused on work metrics. Okay, so they measure a lot the velocity or the metrics about the process and uh, the expenses and the budget. And this is, this is not bad. It's needed to make the work uh, effective and, and also sustainable, but it's not going to help us to success, not because we uh, deliver features to the customer, it's going to automatically jump the fence and all, uh, allows us to increase the budget and to be more sustainable on the long term, on the long run. Uh, when we, uh, so many times we deliver features to the customer and some teams I think I've been working with, they are doing that and uh, they are really upset because uh, the users are not really, uh, the absorption of features is not great. The utilization of features by the users is not great. And this is because we assume in a predictive way that, that delivering a feature is going to work. And this is not true. We need to do some UX, some more research in order to understand things before uh, shifting, uh, delivering features to the, to the users. We need to, to measure things like uh, the outcomes, how things are going to really uh, improve the life of the customer or the effectiveness or the happiness or whatever. Okay, and this is the big gap. Okay, this is the, the thing that uh, we are not doing between the delivering features, which is the output, and uh, increasing the company impacts like sustainability, budget, revenue, and so on. Uh, so measuring those kind of metrics is important. And one exercise I suggest you is to go to the management and say, okay, uh, what are, are the metrics we are uh, using uh, and uh, try to categorize them among these uh, categories and, and, and try to see if we are not uh, having uh, enough uh, metrics about outcomes and, and try and start to, to work that out. It has helped me in, in, in many organizations. Uh, also, uh, if you know UX specialists, uh, UX researchers and, and this kind of specialist, uh, ask uh, leadership to bring them into organization because they are going to bring with them a lot of great ideas. For example, one of the techniques that could help are the test cards. So uh, they, uh, what they do is uh, before uh, releasing a feature, we need to do a kind of a business uh, approval or business uh, examination of the value it's going to deliver. Okay, what are we expecting to, to deliver? 
Uh, what is the impact we expect it's going to create in, in the uh, customer? And how are we going to measure? We are going to run experiments and how are we going to, going to measure if those uh, if that hypothesis uh, of uh, this feature is going to improve the life of the customer or is going to somehow be liked by, by the customer uh, is going to help. So we need to, to define an experiment, to define measures. Sometimes uh, it's very evident that uh, that feature is going to be successful. So we don't need to run experiments for everything. But um, some others, if we uh, can uh, identify that there is some risk in there, it's, uh, it pays off the, the effort of uh, defining these hypotheses running some experiments. Okay, so these are many other techniques from UX design. I encourage you to, to learn them or because they can bring a lot of value into agile development. Uh, another thing uh, uh, I think it could help and in my experience has helped is to push uh, agility through metrics. I mean, there is a mantra in uh, management which, say, which says that uh, that thing that cannot be measured cannot be managed. So uh, if we want to change the style and the mindset of managers, uh, bringing them, bringing their attention into a new kind of metrics uh, can help. Okay, we have seen uh, just before that we have the logic model of metrics, measuring activities, measuring outputs, measuring outcomes for customers, measuring impacts for organization. So this is a way of uh, in shifting the attention into a new uh, a space for, for some managers that are very used to, to measure just work or mainly work. So uh, one of the things that could help is the introduction of OKRs. Perhaps uh, many of you are aware of it. Uh, OKRs uh, stands for Objectives and Key Results. So basically this technique, which is spreading quite a lot, it means that management or leadership is uh, handing over uh, objectives, qualitative objectives uh, for a whole year or for a quarter for the teams. And the teams are going to come up or there is going typically to start a discussion between the management and the teams, how to meet those objectives into what it's called the key results that are concrete uh, metrics that uh, the teams can uh, decide how are they going to meet, to meet uh, these uh, key results what features or what things could impact on those metrics. And uh, typically, like uh, you can see in the slide, uh, OKRs are defined in a more strategical way for the whole organization once a year. And they are split in two and uh, incrementally in quarterly. So they are more manageable and easier to, for teams to decide in uh, 12 weeks how are they going to achieve those uh, uh, key metrics. Okay, so. I encourage you, if you are not aware or you are not using uh, OKRs, to learn about them and perhaps they can be useful to change, uh, to define and set goals in another, in a more agile way, it can help you for your teams. Uh, another technique about uh, goals and metrics is uh, what it's called evidence-based management. Evidence-based management uh, helps organizations to understand how are they currently delivering value, okay? And uh, how uh, can they improve that value in the uh, in the future, okay? So uh, when I mean and I highlight the word understand, it means that uh, many times we are not aware of how are we delivering value. And let's recall what we saw before, the logic model of uh, metrics. We are not measuring sometimes uh, value metrics from the point of view of the user and uh, start thinking and, and discussing internally how those metrics can be uh, discovered or can they can how can they emerge uh, like for example customer satisfaction the feature usage the complaints the sales or we need to discover our uh, own metrics how do we know we are creating value and uh, how can we know uh, how can we improve the current value we are delivering of it, offering new features, uh, delivering uh, new kinds of services or whatever, okay? So we need to uh, understand the value we are creating right now, the value we can deliver in the future. And very important, we need to uh, inspect and adapt the validity 
of those metrics and continuously learn uh, through uh, well, um, uh, understanding those uh, the value and, and, and how can we improve it. Okay, this is going to be a continuous journey into understanding the value and improving. And also, uh, evidence-based management is going to provide uh, with, uh, with, it's going to keep our value creation engine healthy. So uh, it's going to uh, force us to understand how fast are we delivering value or testing hypotheses or learning, okay, on, on the time to market category. And also it's going to help us to be critical with our organizations, our waste, uh, the focus we uh, put on really creating new value and continuously improve that. Okay, so I just uh, encourage you to, if you are not aware of EBM, to, to read this free guide and perhaps it will help your uh, organization. So uh, let's keep on moving. I will be uh, very happy to have some questions from you in the Q&A section some minutes from now. Uh, so in our journey to make Scrum more uh, user-centric and more uh, outcome-oriented, uh, the goals can uh, play a big role in this. Okay, it's like uh, I say here, it's a secret weapon for business agility. Uh, one of the big changes that appeared in the Scrum Guide 2020 was the uh, product goal, okay? The product goal uh, is a measurable state, a concrete state of the product in the midterm, or that is going to provide something, a uh, value for, for the customer internally or externally. In this case, uh, let me show you an example. Uh, for example, we, have, we are in an e-commerce, and uh, we want uh, one of the problems that we have discovered is that we have a lot of uh, abandoned car shopping carts in our e-commerce. So uh, strategically, one of the things we want to achieve is how can we reduce, in this case, we set a concrete uh, time frame, which is three months, and a concrete uh, goal, which is 20%. We want to reduce this abandoned cart rate. So uh, what it says, the Scrum Guide, is that the backlog is not any longer the uh, the bean we are when when we are going to uh, put all the ideas or all the features we think the product should fulfill. Instead, what uh, the Scrum Guide 2020 says is that we are going to focus on how to meet a concrete uh, product goal, and in this case. Uh, we see that we can do some things like, uh, for example, revamp the user interface, uh, do some analysis of data in order to find patterns why uh, the uh, shopping carts are abandoned. Or, for example, another idea could be an express checkout so people can do quicker the uh, buying process and the checkout process and thus uh, reducing the number of abandoned carts or more ideas is, for example, just uh, let's uh, show our credit card into the uh, webcam so the numbers uh, can be scanned and it's easier and has less friction to do the, the payment. Or some other UX-oriented things like uh, interviewing users just to create knowledge about their problems and about new solutions we could improve. Or, for example, benchmark the competition. Okay, so. Like you say, like uh, you can say, see here, uh, those features are mostly oriented to to meet that goal. Some features, like uh, you will see in this pink color, are not uh, I said features, and, and I should have been said uh, items, backlog items, are like user interviews or benchmarking the competition or file patterns, are more uh, research work packages, okay, and not features are, are we want to investigate. So there is uncertainty how to meet that goal and we need to, to do uh, some research and from that we could identify a uh, new feature. So we need to create some slack in this uh, product backlog and be ready for appearing of new uh, ideas emerging on how to meet it and not define it as a uh, concrete way in a uh, previous to deliver sprints of a concrete backlog that should be fulfilled. So, uh, like we said, 
just imagine that uh, someone is proposing uh, to get in the backlog a new landing page, which for sure could be a good idea. But if we want to remain focused on our goals, we should uh, consider if uh, that uh, new feature is going to help in uh, the uh, fulfillment of this goal. And uh, it seems to me that it's not going to help. So it provides a tool for product owners to say, okay, it's important, but let's do it later. Or if it's more important that the thing we are doing right now, let's stop it and let's uh, uh, refill, let's redefine the backlog for a new protocol. And this is what this is new in, in the uh, Scrum Guide 2020. I think uh, it aligns quite well with the practice of many organizations of having a bigger business uh, outcome uh, for in quarters, for example, and sticking to that big goal instead of just uh, having a spread uh, backlog full of uh, random ideas that it's uh, not going to help as much to provide uh, focus value. And uh, we had uh, before the spring goal. Uh, it has been in the uh, Scrum Guide for a long time. However, in my experience, this is something that many teams are still not using to the full potential. Okay, it's it is not the sprint shouldn't be a beam when we throw a lot of uh, uh, random uh, features in order to be delivered to a sprint. If there is no overarching direction for the sprint, perhaps other tools like Kanban can, could be work better. Okay, the, the whole sense of a sprint is to uh, tackle a difficult or complex uh, goal and create a space where people can decide or can uh, discover new ways of meeting that goal. And this can happen even in a sprint. If we are working in a sprint of two weeks, uh, one week, two weeks, three weeks climb, uh, although the uncertainty is smaller than a bigger uh, product goal of three months, for example, there is still the, the possibility of uh, learning new ways of meeting the goal. So still, a sprint shouldn't be considered as a time box where I uh, define a set of features. And at the end of the sprint, I'm going to compare how many of those features were delivered and how many of them were not. This is not uh, the best use of a sprint. Uh, in this example, you could see, for example, a set of tasks or a smaller work items that could help in deliver this uh, spread checkout uh, spring goal, which is one of the things we were considering or ideas we were considering uh, to meet this uh, product goal of reducing the abandoned cards. So we are focusing in this sprint on this, on this thing, and this focus is going to provide a uh, better possibility of uh, delivering a more creative and valuable solution. Uh, in the same way that we did before, just uh, someone could come in the middle of the sprint and say, okay, or just the beginning, let's add a new feature, which is a fraud report. But in the same way we said before, if we want to remain focused on the spring goal, uh, we could say, okay, this is a good idea, but let's do it later. Okay, so we are going. We are doing our way into the uh, this uh, presentation, and uh, mm, we are going to see the final chapter of how to make Scrum user centric. We are going to see some ideas. Uh, one of the uh, very common techniques that are used together in within the framework of Scrum are user stories. Uh, one of the uh, user stories were born to break the uh, separation between people working on a problem or delivering solutions to the customers and the customers. We don't want uh, uh, middle parties, analysts, and so on, uh, specify, specifying a solution and then pass it, handing it over to developers. So the solutions do not need to, the, sorry, the developers do not need to talk to the users. What they need is just to write code. Okay, this is a very a bad practice in my experience uh, because it uh, makes uh, developers just uh, focus on delivering code, not thinking on better ways of solving the problems. And uh, even the those analysts can become bottlenecks. Uh, so perhaps it would be better to uh, start using user stories in the way they were, they were conceived. Like uh, this is a card for um, establishing conversations to prioritize 
uh, to split on smaller chunks and to uh, be alive, uh, even if in the middle of the development, a developer could come and talk to the user and, and try to uncover better ways of delivering those, those features. Uh, and uh, like I said before, if we are uh, using UX techniques, uh, user stories could be the origin where we stick not to the solution. As a user, I want a solution. No, you, uh, users do not want features. They want uh, to solve problems they have or fulfill needs. So let's uh, keep it as a promise for conversation, like uh, let's uh, focus on the problems and let's uh, deliver uh, or identify possible solutions together with the user and uh, defer the uh, definition of the final solution we are going to uh, provide to the last responsible moment. So let's uh, do not do a premature, premature definition of, of the of the feature. Like that, something sometimes uh, treating uh, user stories as just requirements is is not uh, allowing that that flexibility and that conversation. So um, a better way of uh, using user stories is uh, also going to provide value. Uh, considering UX techniques, like we said before, uh, we can see here the what it's called the double diamond uh, definition of uh, design where we have in the first diamond research into the problems what are the problems what are the possible problems what is uh, what problems are really worth uh, solving because some other some problems eventually are not worthy to be solved or the user is not going to change the way they are doing things now so defining which is the right problem and later uh, once we have a concrete problem which we have understood, the second diamond is going to help us to identify possible solutions and to test those solutions because nobody says that even if the problem has a, if the user has a problem which is worth being solved, that the solution we are going to provide is going to be good for the customer. Okay, so doing this kind of uh, prototyping and testing of the, sol of the problems and also the solutions is good. And we also see another technique, which is a truth curve, curve which is uh, going to uh, help us to think which kind of experiment or which kind of investment is uh, realistic and uh, uh, associated to the level of evidence we have in, 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 in this place. Okay, so we don't want to deliver code with a problem we are not sure is a real problem worth solving. And we don't want to write code for a solution that could be uh, tested by using a mock-up or a cheapest way of understanding if the solution is the right one and even tweaking the solution before starting coding because coding is a very expensive way of uh, delivering solutions. Uh, so uh, before doing that, it's worthy to, to, to think on, on the level of evidence and to try to research uh, define a better way of a better not a better a feature and a better user interface and so on in order to start writing code once we are pretty sure what we are doing. Uh, so another uh, thing to consider while uh, making Scrum more user centric and more outcome oriented is the usage of what it's called dual track. I don't know, I don't know if you are aware of what is uh, dual track agile or dual track scrum. Uh, what it means is that uh, more strategic research and more tactical uh, UX uh, is going to be delivered uh, in a stream of work which has different rhythm, which has uh, different uh, type of activities and so on. And there, uh, what it's called the product discovery, and we are going to have another stream of work, which is called the product delivery. Once we know that uh, we have uh, problems uh, research, solutions tested, so we are pretty sure that this solution is going into the right direction, then we can pass it over to the uh, development uh, uh, work stream, where this solution is going to be delivered. So. Product discovery, one of the, the first stream is to find the right thing to be solved. And the second stream is uh, solving that need right, okay? deliver the right things 
uh, deliver them right. So uh, the problem with uh, dual track is that sometimes it is becoming dual track, as uh, Jeff Patton says in this article, you can find uh, in the caption of the picture, where uh, teams are split. We have one team, which is the researcher, the product manager, product owner, the researcher deciding what things need to be done. And another team, which is separated in, I mean, with a different backlog and working at a different uh, uh, speed or pace, where programmers are just delivering what the other crew is uh, telling them to do. Okay. Uh, this, uh, it is still an, this is still an improvement over the uh, waterfall life cycle, though it creates a reward because uh, if we have developers uh, separated from the decision of what things to do and the big decisions of functionally how those features should work, uh, typically they may uh, not understand the purpose or the context of the solutions being defined or even they could bring uh, valuable ideas into the definition of those features. So splitting those teams, it is not uh, perhaps the best way of uh, delivering value. However, many organizations are conceiving the dual track as two teams, the discovery team and the delivery team. And uh, well, this practice is still, still there. Uh, another thing we... Uh, I, I, I like to discover or to uh, discuss with people coming to my training courses or with teams delivering uh, products is uh, they say, okay, uh, but we have a lot of questions joining UX into Scrum, which is the, some UX activities uh, are difficult to fit in two weeks, for example. Uh, and uh, also other questions such as, uh, well, uh, but not the UX uh, activities are not part of the increment. So why should they be delivered within sprints? Or some other questions of uh, what are PBIs are just user stories or they could be other things, okay? So Scrum says that backlog items are work packages that are going to deliver value, but uh, they do not say that those work packages uh they need to be uh just user stories or features they could be uh like it says here ux research like a work package of doing interviews to discover problems and to define possible features to solve those problems that would be uh, perfectly a, a backlog item and there is no feature out of that uh, backlog item so ux work could be like it says here a first citizen class and uh, what we need to discover and uh, is that or we need to understand is that UX work is a um, has a broad spectrum of activities from more strategical activities where we decide we research into the problems and we decide or we find out what solutions are viable and how those solutions functionally should be and some other UX activities are more tactical, like uh, defining low level requirements or defining the user interface, the information architecture, uh, what, whatever, okay? So the most strategic activities typically happen uh, before the initiatives, before the projects, or even some sprints ahead of the delivery of these uh, features. And the refinement, Typically is where we, uh, once we have uh, things that we need to research or more smaller things that we need to, to features that we need to deliver, then uh, they are going to be uh, refined some sprints or, or even the sprint before they are going to be delivered. So uh, this uh, range of uh, types of UX activities and where we are going to do them in the sprints and the refinement, is something that uh, it's explained on the Professional Scrum and with UX course on some, or some articles from Jeff Gottelf you can find on the web. Uh, and uh, just as a summary, um, we are going to, if we join in a single backlog and a single sprint, the UX work and the uh, delivery work, uh, we will have some items like interviews or ethnographic studies or whatever that are going to be full PBIs, full product backlog items, and some others more tactical, like defining the user interface or looking at metrics or whatever, that are going to be part of the uh, feature 
uh, backlog item. So you can see that some items are half green, half blue. Uh, and like I said before, we recommend from scam.org not to have separate backlogs for the reasons that uh, we, dis we uh, discovered before, we, we said before. So uh, we are uh, close to the uh, finish of this session. Okay, I hope uh, I could uh, share with you some interesting ideas and some uh, threads to pull for your for the future. So let's do a quick summary. Uh, first, is that uh, it is super important the leadership mindset to break or make uh, how agile is uh, truly uh, outcome oriented. Uh, in my experience, uh, bottom-up transformations where the teams are trying to change things, they create islands of happiness. They can improve some things. But if uh, the leadership is not really taking decisions from the organizational design point of view, from the budgeting point of view, for uh, metrics point of view, um, it is going to be very hard to really have a big change in the organization. So this is one of the find uh, first uh, learnings or I would like to convey. Uh, another one is that uh, we should explain uh, from the very first moment to the leadership that if they want to establish agile teams, those teams are not intended just to deliver features. Those teams in the most powerful way, they are intended to solve customer problems. And that drives naturally to bring into the teams business people or UX people, okay, designers, because they are going to uh, collaborate on understanding and, and, and giving solutions to the, to, the, to the customers. And together within the team, developers are also like analysts, programmers, testers, whatever, they are going to help. They are creative people. They understand uh, frequently very well, which is the functional way of delivering value so they can bring a lot of value. Okay, so set up autonomous teams that they are really autonomous to take decisions, uh, whatever it takes uh, to solve customer problems. Uh, another finding is that uh, changing the mindset and the culture of organizations sometimes pass, uh, is uh, achieved by how, uh, changing the way organizations and teams define goals and also the metrics, what, uh, what we are looking to. So if we achieve that, uh, we want to give autonomy to the teams, we want to make the teams uh, outcome oriented, let's hand over to them uh, outcome oriented goals and let's start measuring outcome oriented and impact oriented metrics. So this is also going to help. And uh, Scrum teams should do both uh, discovery work, deciding what to do and how functionally that uh, feature should be, and delivery work, just uh, uh, writing low-level requirements, uh, testing them, delivering them to the technical way to the uh, users. And uh, OK, I hope uh, it was helpful to you. And now I'm open to, to your questions. Hello, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for the insights and tips you've shared with us. So let's move to the QA session a bit. Uh, so the first question is, could you please describe the main three coaching approaches you use on a regular basis? OK, this is a very good question. Let me think. Uh, first of all is uh, just not start talking about Agile or practices or whatever, the Agile jargon. Uh, I think it's very important to uh, partner with uh, leaders or managers or whoever, uh, trying to find what are their problems. Okay, so let's uh, understand how problems uh, what are the problems that are relevant to the user? And let's start uh, pulling from agile techniques in order to how can be solved. And the second uh, approach would be do not rush. I mean, sometimes we want to do everything at once, introducing a lot of techniques, a lot of frameworks, 
and this is uh, overwhelming people. Uh, people, they have still a lot of work to do. So let's be careful about this. Let's bring a more full uh, approach in trying to solve problems. And then uh, another thing for me is very important is uh, uh, try to find a subset of the teams or people or folks or whatever, which they are in favor of uh, the change of changing things. Do not uh, spend your energy trying to push change into people that are unwilling to change or they are unwilling, they are not aware of the of the problems that, that they have currently have. So they go slow, uh, talk about their problems and start uh, focusing on the people which is prone to change. Perhaps those three approaches could be useful. Yeah, you're saving up energy for the things that really matter, right, Alex? Yeah. And for the and for the people who really want to change. Okay, give us a second. We're trying to probably choose the the best questions here, the more focused on on the talk. But we do thank you for the tips and for the summary in the end. I do, I do believe it's going to contribute to the overall awareness of the people who are watching us today and sharing is caring. So thank you for your care. <laughs> thank you yeah. for your care. Thank you for your support. Uh, Probably that's all from us today. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you with us and uh, hope to see you at our next meetings and good luck with your work. Okay, thank you, you. Uh, thank, thank you to you. Intelias for this big event and again, our support from the Spanish people to the people in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you for standing up, standing with Ukraine. Thank you, Alex. Goodbye.